You ready? You ready? I was born ready. You're baby. born ready. Here we go. I get a haircut Thursday. This one right here. Check one. Check one. Hey guys, welcome to Sober Talk. You're here because you want to get sober, you need to get sober. Perhaps you're sober curious, whatever the reasons may be. I am glad you're here. How do you know if you have a drinking problem or a drug problem? It's real easy if it causes problems. If you're like me, you start drinking to deal with problems. If you're like me, the drinking becomes a bigger problem than a problem you're actually trying to deal with in the first place. My check liver light came on. I, uh, I couldn't make up a flight of stairs. I got heart issues and I was breaking my wife's heart because she thought that I, I love the booze more than I did her and the kids and at the time I did. So uh, look, it sucks that I'm wired this way, but it's nothing to be embarrassed about. The only thing to be embarrassed about is not getting help. And uh, I mean, and how, how long does it take? How long does it take for you to finally get help? Uh, today our special guest is Larry the DUI guy. And it's a uh, foreman's the last name. Foreman, you got it. Larry, yeah. and you're a, you, you look like a young guy, but your hair is a little bit, you got this cool. It's got that salt and pepper thing going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I was very blessed. I was, uh, be, thanks to it, I was making. We always have people with good hair on the show, even <laughs> when it needs to be cut. <laughs> it's a prerequisite. Our other friend is another attorney. Uh, his name is Johnny uh, Harrelson. And he had good hair, and he made it on the show. I love Johnny. Very good guy. Yeah, very good guy. The, uh, so I'm trying to do this reoccurring segment of like how much a DUI cost, and you know, or just alcohol. How much does drinking cost? And sure. I, I had this thing where I was, uh, I was drinking. So let's say a 12 pack a day. Mm -hmm. So that's about that's about. <laughs> You look like a deer in head like this. <laughs> well, I'm I'm looking at the camera. Uh, I was, you can, this, 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 should I should I not? I don't know. This no, you I, you just talk to me. It's very I, okay. All right. Yeah, very conversational. Yeah, uh, I'm getting jacked up in CBD THC free drink here. Coffee right here. Yeah, you got your drink. Uh, got your coffee. Um, I was spending about three hundred bucks a month on beer. Mm. Then I would go out and I would buy people drinks, and I have one too many myself. Thanks, you know, I'm buying a whole bar of drinks, but it starts getting really expensive when there's a um, you get a DUI. So they call you the Absolutely. DUI guy. They do. And I didn't know this the last time uh, until your buddy came on the show is that the first three you di three the first three DUIs is a misdemeanor in the state of Kentucky? In Kentucky, yes. Wow. So what what do you think? What does it remind people at home, what does it cost to get a DUI in Kentucky at least? So uh start to finish, this is basically the rundown. Um once you are arrested. First of all, when the handcuffs come on and you are officially being charged by a police officer in Kentucky, you're taken to jail. The first right out of the gate, number one, if you have any cash on you, you probably already know. You've heard the horror stories. I didn't, that, and never, they take it away? They ca that cash may disappear. And <sighs> good luck proving, yeah, I had 60 bucks, I had 600 I had 200 Now, God forbid you have anything more than that. Mm -hmm. If they find drugs on top, well, now it's drug money. Now you're definitely not getting it back. So mm. that's the initial expense. You haven't even been released from jail yet. You already are out all that money. Uh, now, now it doesn't always happen, but we in the in the legal field, we we know that it happens all the time, and gotcha. I get those phone calls. Gotcha. Then when you're released from jail, you got to pay the hotel fee, right? The you're, you've stayed in the 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 uh, a one star, like a one and a half star, I guess. Yeah, it's real fancy. It's got a red roof and everything. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. So you got you got to pay to stay there. Not only did you not want to get arrested, you also didn't want to stay there, and you have to pay for it. Then, uh, depending on which charge it is and what other charges you have looming, uh, there may be a bond. Now you do get that money back, but if you cannot pay the bond up front, let's say it's you know twenty five hundred dollars for like a DUI third in Jefferson County is very common. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you can't pay that, you're not getting out of jail. You're going to be sitting in jail. You're going to stay there until your um, either your lawyer lowers it to an ROR uh, bond, which is uh, released on your own recognizance type bond, right. which is zero dollars. Okay. Or if your mom, dad, grandma, girlfriend, whoever puts up the twenty five hundred, and you're released from from jail. So again, you have. If you notice, we are still in the like phase zero. Of your case, you have you're just getting out of jail, and you're already so out. they 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 tack on all these little ancillary fees, and you're you're a few thousand bucks out of the gate, but basically, right? Okay. Right, that's right out of the gate. Gotcha. Right? Now, the next step is you got to hire an attorney. So once you hire an attorney, uh, depending on who they are and what they practice, they it may be a family attorney. A lot of people don't realize 
DUIs are, by the American Bar Association, in 2008, DUIs are the only, this is the only criminal field that the ABA, the American Bar Association, has said, this is a specialty field. Now, in Kentucky, interestingly enough, we're not allowed by law, the uh, uh, the ethics board, the um, Kentucky Bar Association, mm-hmm. does not allow us to call ourselves specialists. We're not allowed to use the word specialist in the way that we advertise ourselves. However, we can say, you know, I focus on primarily on DUIs and whatnot. This is what we do. Uh, now, we've since expanded into wrongful death and personal injury, car accidents, and so forth. We're basically a one-stop shop at this point. But... Um, so now that you've hired this attorney, if it was a family law attorney, just a, uh, you know, a family attorney that you, you all go to, you've all gone right. to all these years, uh, you are going to take your money, which is going to be maybe 500 maybe 800 maybe maybe 1000 bucks, uh, pay them, and they'll just get you a guilty plea. That's, that's the typical um, – for someone who has never practiced DUI law in their life, they just it, – it's, it's not uncommon, and it's okay. You know, this is this is what happens when you hire someone who does not know how to deal with the DUI charge because DUIs are very, very complicated. And we can get into that if you want me to, but I know you you asked me to, to answer the question. Yeah, I'm yeah, giving yeah, you the yeah. lawyer answer. No, no, that's fine, that's fine. So basically, uh, so now you've hired – let's say you hire a lawyer. Um, you choose to hire a lawyer. So now you're also out somewhere probably between 500 and $5,000 in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Now, if you go out to other states like California, I know a guy in Arkansas who charges $14,000 for a first offense DUI. Jeez. I know firms in uh, Georgia that charge $65,000 for a first offense DUI. So it, it, hold, on, hold on, back up. You said firms in Georgia that charge how much? Sixty-five thousand. Sixty-five thousand. And who hires these? This is the, the the executives, the CEOs. I mean, and if you're dialing for dollars, and you just, that's the first person you call, uh, what's that? What's that law firm in Kentucky? That's uh, uh, Stites Harbison. Remember that? Stites that, Harbison. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they were. Boy, they were. They were. They were expensive. My shirt is. Look at that. How cool is that? It's doing a little uh, fancy spancy. I shouldn't have worn the shirt on, on the show. Uh, but so <laughs> who? But do, does anyone really hire a sixty-five thousand dollar DUI? Or is that uh, I an mean, attorney? He's still in business. The, the thing is, a lot of these bigger firms, they do like a trickle-down uh, type system. They have a tiered system where if you want to hire big guns upstairs, you pay the full 65. You want to hire their second best, you only pay like 40. It's a misdemeanor in the state of Kentucky. Why in the hell would anyone really hire a hire a that kind of law firm? Is it because of the CEO of Papa John's or what? what, what? I'm just curious. I mean, if, well, first off, I don't know anyone in Kentucky who charges those prices. Okay, but you're saying they can get high. Okay. They, they can. And eventually, you know, as, as we continue to grow, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know what is going to be my final benchmark in a what's your What's the range you're seeing in Kentucky for DUI? Well, like I said, if if you're just looking for a plea lawyer, just mm-hmm. hold my hand as we walk down the plea guilty aisle. Yeah, that's yeah. five hundred bucks. I mean, you can do that yourself. I don't recommend it because prosecutors are not your friend. Right, they're not there to help you. Okay, they're, they're just there to to get get you're a number. They're just there to get your money and get you out the door. Wow. So, well. yeah. So five hundred bucks. Um, but if you hire a specialty firm mm-hmm. like us. Then you're looking upwards of 3,500 as a bare minimum for a first offense DUI with no trial, and then double whatever the original asking price was if we go to trial. So, so we all just think about. So you you brought up the point. So you get a DUI, and all of a sudden you have cash in your pocket. That that hundred bucks that's gone. Uh, then you, you find drugs and some cash. All of a sudden that's drug money. So that's another. That's another charge, right? Potentially, Potentially. yeah. Not the money, but the the drug part. You you can be charged with trafficking depending on how much you have. How, that's right. If it's just a little bit of pot or something, if it's right. a bag of pot or whatever, I don't Although know. Well, you'd be works. surprised. Cops love to overcharge. You know why? What is that? It gives them negotiation room for the prosecutor. Now they're like, oh look, we amended the charge for you. You're welcome. Oh, kind of how about yeah, that? It's, it's so disgusting. So we so we get in. We we rarely talk about this. We didn't talk about this with your buddy John. But I want to talk about it with you. Sure. Uh, what if you kill somebody because you're drunk? Do you DUI, is that a different attorney than you? No, not at all. It it just means much much higher fees. I mean, you're talking now. Uh, I mean, depending on how they charge you. Uh, if you remember, uh, may she rest in peace. The the police officer 
uh, off the she got the guy, Man- Manjido, she was the construction okay. guy for MSD yes. truck hit it. Yes. He was watching porn apparently. Is that what it was? Yeah, and drinking Jeez. and watching uh, Pornhub. At, at the same in, time. At the same time, God bless killed this police, and I think I think it was MSD, is our Metro Sewer yeah, District, something like that. Yeah, so, something like that, big company, and they had to pay her a gazillion dollars or something crazy. That was on the civil side, but then he was also prosecuted mm. on the and and they tried to prosecute him as a DUI. Now I haven't followed that case actually. Now that you reminded me, I, yeah. I'm gonna leave when I leave here. I'm gonna go look it up, but um, they charged him with, I believe. Uh, was it not murder? Uh, I think it was it was manslaughter and DUI, something like that. Oh, geez, a double whammy. And the blood came back. I think it came back clean. It was just like prescription meds, and everybody was still saying, "Oh, he was high in those prescription meds." It was the thin blue line. You know, they had right. they had like an army of troopers and officers filling the pews. Like to the, there was standing room only. It was all blue because during his arraignment, they all came in. To, oh wow! It was wow. it was completely on. Can you imagine being that guy? And I want to tell you right now, I've driven drunk. Everyone on the show, everyone's watching. If I had a DUI for every time I should have had a DUI, they would have thrown away the key. They, they <laughs> were, or something. I mean, I don't know. Three mis- if it's a misdemeanor for the first three times. I it's actually a traffic offense. It's a glorified. We call it. It's a T. If you look up the court case, it is actually a traffic offense. Now it's a glorified traffic offense, but it's actually you keep saying misdemeanor, and I just you know. I, well, I yeah, run that, with that's, it, yeah, I just heard it, that. It's basically that. a misdemeanor. You're absolutely right. Right. So, but if you. <sighs> Uh, my ADD kicked in. We're talking about money. Money, 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 Costs. money. The cost. So, so we're, I'm, I'm trying to just tell people. Like, so you're okay, you're an attorney for a DUI. Allegedly, a Larry, <laughs> Larry the DUI guy. I love that. Um, so. And you have you do, back in the day? Did you drink and drive? No, no really? never. And you and and you because you just know the pain in the ass it would be. Yes, and plus the the reason I I told you this before mm-hmm. the show. I quit drinking oh, yeah. because one of the things that I, I quit for two reasons. Number one, productivity, mm-hmm. so that I can be a lot more efficient with my clients. Because even one uh, after thirty, one drink would just the next morning. I'm not a hundred percent. Yeah, and I'm know? not a hundred percent with without. I'm going on. I'm pushing a year and uh, alcohol free, and I'm I'm a. Uh, my thing is trying to find things to do. Now you you saw the comedy compound. I got everything to do, but there for for like a year and a half, man, I didn't do anything. And I was just like, you know, have beer I mean, in the it fridge. It kind of does to you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just, I was just. Uh... But the second reason I quit is because I saw all the trauma that it causes my clients. Jeez. And it's just, it's, it's bad. It's really, really bad. So I, I saw, I just, the cost benefit. Basically, at some point in life, you kind of do a cost benefit analysis, and you start to realize, you know, what benefit am I gaining from this? Am I is the benefit? I think George Carlin put it really well. One of my yeah. favorite comedians. He yeah. said, you know. When you start out with with alcohol, there's lots, or he was talking about drugs, but we can talk about alcohol, it's the same thing. Yeah, sure. There's lots and lots of pleasure, very, very little pain. And then as you continue to use whatever it is that you're using, eventually that scale begins to tip. And as George puts it, he's like, you know, the scale is completely the other way, and there's very, very little pleasure, and it's all pain. And at that point, hopefully your brain kicks in and says, wait a minute, this doesn't work anymore. And it, it I'm going to die. You know? Yes, <laughs> and that's that's. I would be. I would have been dead if I, because I had a, you know, I had a, the benefits of being an alcoholic. You know, I, the health benefits benefits were god awful, but the uh, money, everything, everything was. You know, I was going to lose. I was going to lose my home. I was going to lose my kids. I was going to, you know, everything. My my commercial property, my place on the beach. I would have lost it all, and uh, and then I I could have killed someone. So it's really really. At, at, you know, at my age, 104, you know, you start thinking about those things. And, uh, guys, I'm starting to go find me for a haircut. And it I think looks so. great for 104, don't they? Yeah, I do. It's Botox. Sean McGuire, he does all my work. <laughs> uh, but uh, I uh, and, and I just try, you know, and it's funny. When we talk to people on, on Sober Top, we get a lot of people who take that first step, and they call on the show, and they go, I need to quit, man. I need to quit. The first thing we tell them, like, go to your doctor because you can – you can die from alcohol withdrawal. That and benzos. Yeah. And um, but just don't wait till you have to hire Larry, the DUI guy, to get you out. Now, are you do you practice law in other states, or is Kentucky Kentucky mainly your main place? Kentucky's mainly my place. Yeah. Uh, we do have an Indiana lawyer, mm-hmm. so we do take cases in Indiana. 
Uh, but m- mostly it's it's in Kentucky. We are trying to expand into Tennessee and Ohio over the next few months. And do you have to get attorneys that get licensed in those states? Oh, I mean, I could get licensed myself. I mean, yeah. right now Kentucky is a UBE state, which is the Uniform Bar Exam. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of nice if you get if you pass the if I take the UBE right now, I'll be automatically licensed in like. 36, I think, states. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. So, like, California, Florida, New York, excluding probably Illinois, definitely excluding those four. But pretty much subtracting 10 more, you're, you're, I'll be licensed in more than half the United States. So, let's do this. I want... So, I do not want... about money. I keep diverting you. Yeah, no, no, that's all right. But I do not want to condone drinking and driving. I do not want to condone that, but I... I speak openly against it. I actually, every New Year's, Mm -hmm. I advertise that I am buying Ubers to people who can't get home. I personally, from my personal bank account, I buy Ubers for people. So, or actually, one, no, twice, twice, I've actually went and gone, you know, picked people up from the bar and driven them home just so that they don't have to drive drunk. And how are you? So, so what, what advice? I'm like taking business away from myself. <laughs> right. I, isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Uh, what advice would you tell people? You're, you're drinking, you're three beers in, you get pulled over. We don't want to condone it, but let's talk about it. Yeah. I mean, there's a fine line because last time I had Johnny on, uh, your buddy uh, Harrelson, which he'll be back on in a couple weeks, uh, he said, dude, I, that's a whole show. That's a whole show. It. I don't. Is there a way to touch on this? First of all, just don't do it. Don't. Obviously drink. not. No, a hundred percent. Do not do it. And this is coming from an attorney and a comedian. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. You you started as uh, I know you now. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting putting things together. We know as mutual friends. Uh, but you did stand up for I a did. while. Yeah. I did. That's, yeah. that's 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 uh, and you go screw this. <laughs> I'm not working for thirty bucks. <laughs> well, I did. It was a side gig for me. It was it was for funsies. Because yeah. I, I've been listening to. Yes, George. he did just say funsies. He did. <laughs> and you, he he has a girlfriend. I heard him say it in the green room. <laughs> I since I was like about maybe twelve or thirteen years old, I've been listening to stand up. And my first introduction at thirteen years old was George Carlin. Yeah. So you can imagine the kind of crap I was listening to, you know, a 12, 13 year old boy should not be listening to this stuff, but it kind of formulated me as a man today. And I learned things that, you know, at a young age that I should not have learned until way, way, way later. And that kind of helped, uh, you know, kind of formulate the world for me too. But, um, I forgot what your original question was. Well, if we were going to condone. Oh, con- yeah. dry, okay. So you, you had three beers. You were behind the wheel. You get pulled over. Cop comes over, you know, knocks on your window. Please roll the window down. So there are two schools of thought. Um, uh, now, obviously, this is not legal advice, what I'm about to say. I have to do, give that preface. I'm not licensed anywhere other than the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Right. Uh, the other 49 states, I'm not licensed to practice law. So, And this is not legal advice even if you're in Kentucky. But this is professional advice from someone who understands how this stuff works. So with that being said, uh, there are two schools of thought. You know, uh, The level of compliance is entirely up to you. How comfortable you feel, how safe do you feel, do you conceal carry, and so on and so forth. So when the officer comes up and knocks on your window, you know, you can crack the window open. You're under no, there is no law in, in, in the universe that I know of in, in the United States that says you have to roll your window all the way down. Then the officer or the deputy or the sheriff or the trooper are going to try and coerce you into doing what they're asking you to do. It's a power trip. Mm-hmm. It's a power trip. It's a pure, they're drunk on their power. They, they're in the street. Remember this. If you don't remember anything else about this talk, remember this. You're never going to win your case on the street. Always fight your case in court. Never fight your case on the street. Now, with that being said, because so I would be intimidated. They're like, you know, and a buddy of mine's attorney, he just sees something not talking. He got out of his car. He knew he wrecked his car. Got yeah. out of the car, put the keys somewhere, and just said, he said, no, I don't want to talk to my attorney. I talk to my attorney. He wouldn't say anything. I'm not taking the breathalyzer. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing anything. Very smart. And that's that's that was going to be the next thing. So let, let's let's inch our, our way towards it. Refuse everything. Like you said, Tom, absolutely refuse everything. So we'll, we'll get to that in just refuse a second. Refuse everything. Choose to refuse or you will lose. Have you seen my commercials? Choo- or is that you? Yeah, that's me. Choose to refuse or you'll lose. There you the DUI. There you go. Attorney. <laughs> so when you crack that window open, if, if just enough for him to be – I mean some people say – uh, you don't even have to do that. You just have like a little piece of paper if you have it with your license, registration, proof of insurance, like already slapped on it and just like kind of put that on the window 
and and let him deal with it basically you know and if mm -hmm. he if he continues to harp i mean you're you're going to lose eventually that window is going to get broken and that handle is going to turn you will be ejected out of the vehicle now hopefully in living form you know that's the risk that you're running especially yeah. if you're mm -hmm. i'm non white i'm i i mean it's the truth we've all seen it there's there's we're not going to be dancing around this topic it's if you're non white you are at greater risk of serious physical injury and or death by a police officer i'm not no comment no comment <laughs> But, but you choose to review or you will f refuse to... Choose to refuse or you will lose. Refuse to refuse. Choose to refuse. Choose to refuse or you will lose. So just... Yeah. Refuse everything. And, but, but say, take me, take me in. And, and yeah, and so when the officer says, will you please perform my dog and pony show? I'm sorry, the, the field sobriety test, which mm -hmm. are a dog and pony mm -hmm. show. When they say, come over here and perform these tests for me, um, you are basically... <laughs> You're you're at the mercy of this cop. This is his playground. This is his territory. Yes. You know he's he's going to make you do all the. And he of has things. lots of stage time. He's comfortable up there. He's on the clock. He's making money yes. off of you right now as you're doing this Simon Says game. That's another way we like to call it. Mm -hmm. It's Simon Says do this, and if you don't do it to my satisfaction, what do you, what is your uh, what is your reward, Tom? Nice little shiny pair of handcuffs, and they're not fuzzy cuffs either. Mm -hmm. So I like that, you know, if we had like back in the day, we had like some champagne. I'm mm. sorry, wrong show. <laughs> so we got a we got a call. We got a text from a guy. It says, hello, Tom. This is Chad. I'm going to go to court tomorrow morning to plead guilty to my third DUI mm. and third habitual offender. Let's call him up, see what he's got going on. That sounds like Indiana to me. If I were a betting man, habitual offender sounds like Indiana. Let's see. Is this coming in? Hello. Chad is Tom and Larry, the DUI guy from Sober Talk. What's happening? Oh, not much. Just sitting here listening to you guys. Now, your area code doesn't sound like Indiana, but Larry, the DUI guy, seems to think that you are in Indiana. I, I snuffed him out. I guarantee it. Is it in Indiana? No. Nope. North. North. Ohio? Michigan. 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 Okay. So what's going on? You have why in the hell do you have three DUIs? Why what's what what's it going to take, dude? What's going on? We'll talk, uh, but... Actually, it's going to take me my fourth one. This is my technically my fourth one. Hmm. Lifetime. I got I got two uh, um, one in 05 and one in 06. and then I caught one 2019, and then I caught one this April. So before we get to Larry. Uh, the, to talk with this, uh, have you considered stop drinking or using or whatever it is that you do? Well, I have now. I uh, remember talking to you about two months ago that I was going to uh, um, a treatment facility. How'd that work out? I did good. I spent 30 days there. Well, could, I think uh, I think James was uh, on, the ho uh, on the show with you at the time. Okay, okay. Did you go to somewhere up in Michigan? Yes, I did. Nice. And uh, yeah. and did you did it stick? Oh yeah, it definitely did. Well, good. So I'm, all right, so I'm, I feel better now. So you you didn't get this current DUI last week. This is something after the uh, after the um, uh, the the rehab that you went to. No, this was before the rehab. I mean, I'm sorry, this is before the rehab. So good. I yeah. feel like. And are you working? Are you working uh, the steps or any kind of a program or anything aftercare? Yeah, actually, I'm on uh, working on step three. Uh, I worked on step, did my step one and step two in there, mm -hmm. and uh, working on my step three. And Dude, right I, now, I'm I'm in a step four for like ten months. So don't you know? Um, and I'm not working the steps. I'm living them, and I I'm a I'm a slow learner. Uh, Still messing up, not messing. I mean, still trying to figure out. But James is my actual personal sponsor, and he's uh, he's helping me out. But so, well, good. So you have. Does that help him out that he's been that he's he's went to rehab and such? A hundred percent. I mean, absolutely. Obviously, again, I can't give legal advice uh, on this show. Period. Even mm -hmm. if you were in Kentucky, but um, if you call me, we can we can maybe have an informal conversation. Um, <clears throat> so on your third DUI, having treatment. Okay, because here's here's the th here's the deal. When you, if this if you're, they have you dead to rights, and it's it's rare that I say that because again we 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 try to fight everything just because we uh, we have to follow the constitution. The constitution allows me to put the prosecution to their burden of proof. If I can make an honest witness look like a liar, 
Wade v. United States, this is the Supreme Court, I think 1969, I can't remember the exact year, says, I, if, I, if I can do it, it doesn't matter what the truth is. I'm the defense attorney. I have no obligation to find the truth. My obligation is to the client. Um, if I can win a case, and I've won the unwinnables. I've also lost what I thought were dead winners. Um, those, those types of cases, I have to put the prosecution to the burden of proof because this is what we do, and I'm, I try to do the best for my clients. But if they got you dead to rights and you feel that you know, you're going to be pleading guilty, or even if they don't, you're like, you know what, I just want to own up to it, call it a day. And I, from what I hear, man, Michigan is brutal. Michigan and Illinois are both like states you do not want to get a DUI. And they, they'll suspend your license, I think, for a lifetime in Michigan on a third. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me, let me, can I can I read a comment here? I'm sorry, uh, Chad and uh, Larry. I didn't mean to interrupt. But this guy Rick says, in my state, you can refuse to do the roadside field sobriety test, but if you refuse to give a breath sample, it's an automatic loss of license for at least one year. But can't you go down and get the blow and go? And That's put exactly right. That's what people don't realize. And you know. I don't want to advocate for drinking and driving again. We yeah. talk about this time and time again, but God forbid if you're ever in that spot. And sometimes you've only had one brewski and you are 100% good to drive, you will still get arrested by many a cop in the United States. And can you imagine thinking that I had one beer coming from Marty's house to my house? He lives in the neighborhood. And I said, no, I'm not taking a breathalyzer test. And then they say, oh, no driver's license for one year. And then you get the blow and go and you're driving day But one. a lot of people... Do the one year. They don't get the blow and go. They don't understand. Yeah. They need to talk to me. My shirt is like a <laughs> Vegas shirt. Look at that. It's all flashy, my golf shirt. <laughs> so, so uh, Chad, so uh, you're, you go tomorrow for your, your next arraignment? Um, actually, I'm going to plead guilty. It's plea date. Third offense, it's third offense DUI and third offense habitual offender. Are you represented by counsel? Yes. Okay, good, good. I just want to make sure that... That's the best that the prosecuting attorney would give me. Well, I also violated my probation by getting this DUI. And one more time, when did this DUI take place? 2019? My... uh, Most recent one. Third one. Third one, 2019. And then my uh, fourth one, uh, August 4th, uh, or August 6th of uh, 2021, or April 6th. Sounds like 2021. Yeah, sounds like a, so. And then you went to rehab after April. Yes, I went in the April 26th. So hopefully, you think you could not get a fifth one? I can't. I'm 35 years old. I'm done. Otherwise, it's the end Just, of the road. It's for done. You. Drinking. Yeah. I, I. I mean, I thought I was done the last time, but I guess I didn't hit the rock bottom. Is it is it a felony? Uh, a third. You're being charged as a third, right? You said. Yep. Fourth. But it's his fourth. But does, the Michigan look back window probably does not uh, calculate the 2015 one. It sounds like. Yes, they did. So they, this is technically my fourth, but they the highest you can go is a third. The highest you can. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so unlike Kentucky, Michigan only gotcha. And is that a felony in Michigan? Yes. It is a this felony. Is, this is my eighth felony. Chris, because of alcohol. Chris says in his state, it's a mandatory seven days in jail for first DUI. Is that real? Probably. I don't know what state it is. Chris, what, what state is that? I mean, in Kentucky, it, if you get into, um, if it's an aggravated DUI, there's a minimum. What does it mean? Like you're pissed off when you have the DUI, or what does it mean aggravated? Like you're, you're... <laughs> I don't know. I, you're not... very angry at the cop. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there are six aggravating factors. Uh, if you're going down the wrong way on the highway, if you have oh, a child gosh. under 12 in the car, oh. if you're <clears throat> speeding 30 miles an hour. Of course, or greater, there should be. If you refuse on a on a second or greater, um, if you blow above a one five, and if you cause injuries um, to another individual, those are the six. And and if that if one of those things happen, you get mandatory jail time, mandatory ignition interlock, probably higher fines, higher court costs. Well, same court costs. Excuse Sometimes me. I f- I think they're a little laxadaisy. I feel like they're Kentucky is on the like the bottom five percent when it comes to penalties on DUI. We're, we've gotten a little bit better with the ignition interlock, but we used to be like number forty nine. Now the ignition interlock is that is that where you have to take a breathalyzer before you your car yes. will start? Yes, that's the blow and go. That's the blow and go. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So Chad, I, I I wish you luck tomorrow. I mean, that's uh, are you are you looking at jail time or at least are, can you serve it on house arrest? Um, uh, probably more prison time. That's heavy, man. 
Chad, this no, is, but my, you're going to benefit from this. This is yeah. something you are going to, I, this may be the one thing that keeps you, you sober. You know, I think I, my guidelines are 10 to uh, 46, 46 months or something like that. So you asked me a question earlier, Tom, is his treatment, the fact that he's gotten treatment since April of this year, is that going to help him get a little yeah, bit more lenient yeah, sense? It, yeah, hundred and ten percent. Judges, after you make a mistake, you know, even if it's your twenty sixth mistake, I mean, of course, the, the closer you get to to you know the higher mistakes, the the more difficult it becomes. But um, if you take mitigating action, if you show the court, the judge, the prosecuting attorney, the victims, if there are any. Uh, other than the Commonwealth or the state, that look, I'm trying to make my life better. I'm I I know I made a mistake and I'm owning up to it and I'm trying to fix. I know I have a problem. And I'm trying to fix it. Judges will look on you favorably. Any of those accidents? Did you hurt anyone else? Any of those DUIs or were they accidents or just getting pulled over? Just getting pulled over. That's good. Carl was wanting a blow and go. A blow and go. Carl is where they. They put this contraption in your car. It's a breathalyzer. It's attached to your starter. It's attached to your starter. So wow. basically, it's what they take is they take the the circuit uh, of the starter, and they they disengage it and they insert a little black box, and that black box is then attached to the ignition. Wow, device. that's awesome. So you can't you cannot start the car unless you blow into this device, and once you blow into it, you have to register below a zero point zero two. Now, there are things that will trigger it that have nothing to do with alcohol, like bubblegum, energy drinks, de-icer in the wintertime. That thing Don't will... drink the de-icer. Don't drink Not the de drink. You will die. <laughs> and, but it can also trigger it. And here's the other thing. If it's court-mandated, the ignition interlock, if you're, sometimes people get it just for their kid. To make right, sure right, right, right. But if it's court-mandated and you have a de-icer and you're just spraying that sucker on and you try to start the car and it won't start, that triggers a, what's called a violation that is alerted to the ignition interlock place that you've chosen which then bounces over to the court which then lands in the prosecutor's lap in which case they can choose to revoke any probation you may have so you have to be very very careful what you do with it wow chad good luck text me and let me know how it goes so you think that you're looking at prison time now do you are you married do you have kids or anything yeah married two kids eight year old and a, a 16 month old maybe they can learn from dad's mistakes hopefully you know I put my son through it once when he was five. So, yeah. I hope I can learn from this mistake. Good luck, Chad. Chad, you have to. Thank buddy. you. All right, buddy. Keep me posted. I'll talk to you soon. Yep, thanks. Wow. Can you imagine how afraid you would be if you're on your fourth DUI Especially in the state of Kentucky, with just a slap on the wrist, you know, I'm really intimidated by your hair. I'm, I usually have beautiful, long, luxurious, waving hair, but your hair is like perfect. I don't dude. know where you're getting that, man. No, this look is, at this. I was sleeping. This is like my sleep hair. Dang, so, you know, I'm really she, intimidated. I'm, I'm on a good flashing. Day, my shirt is flashing. I feel like I'm in Vegas. I haven't moved. I'm like a statue. Oh, good for you. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Good I, for you. I, it's the Russian blood. So wait, in me. next by Friday, a hey, Friday morning, I'm gonna have a spray tan and a new haircut. I'm gonna have the Republican number hair, Larry the DUI guy haircut there, number five. I don't think you you know what you're getting yourself into. I don't think you want it. Oh, jeez. I don't care. <laughs> I'm so beat. I'm so tired. Uh, so let's see here. Let's see who else we have uh, uh, wanting to come on the Sober Cell and talk to our, talk with us. Uh, what do I need to do? Let's see here. Want to go live tonight? And about Yeah, let's call this person. All right, we're calling this here. All right. I don't know what what their issue is it may have nothing to do with legal stuff i guess we're about to find out aren't we yeah sometimes they call just tell me how funny i am how great i am oh, that's how beautiful awesome. my hair is oh, really that, they have to, they... <laughs> i'm just kidding thanks for the show i've been catching bits and pieces i may I try to get my body and life back in order doug hey, this Tom. Is... hey doug how's it going brother oh, it's going good man uh, so uh, can I read your text a little bit? I won't say your last name or nothing, but it's, sure, a, sure. it's a Tom. Thanks for the show. You have beautiful hair. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I have been catching bits and pieces. I, I'm I'm a uh, I'm myself. I'm trying to get my body and life back to the right path. So tell me, what, what are you struggling with? Is it booze? Is it drugs? What is it? Uh, never drugs. It was always alcohol. How old of a guy are you? Uh, 58. Okay. 
So you're uh, you're Larry's age, maybe a little younger. Oh, geez, how about, about there? <laughs> the, like, it's the hair. But the you're hair. 12, right? You're yeah. like old. It's like I'm fat, Nine. skinny at the same time. You're like old and young at the same time. It's, I, it's awesome. I act like a nine year old all the time. I, I think that's the only way to live life. And Doug has a Doug. Are you in the Kentucky area? Yes. Okay. I, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So if we have any legal questions, have you ever had a DUI or anything? Have you hit that kind of rock bottom? Yes, one time. How long? Ago, how long ago? Probably, was it? Yeah. probably eleven years ago. Okay. Okay. And uh, so right now, how how often are you drinking? Daily? No. Right. No. Well, I was. Um, as you said the other night, my uh, my check liver light came on. on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, every time I well, a couple of years ago, I I had uh, diagnosed with cancer, I had prostate cancer, and I went through radiation, and that probably should have been a wake up. And I'm not as young. Yeah, alcohol. Alcohol's big, big. I can call so many different cancers call from alcohol. Uh, yeah. So you're 58. You've had cancer. Uh, how often are you drinking now? And did you quit? Co- have well, you quit completely I, or what? Yeah. What happened was when Good I for you. when I had the um, when I had the uh, liver issue, like I'm saying, uh, my enzymes. Every time I went, my enzymes were spiking higher and higher and higher. They sent me to a Is it the GI the doctor building? and. That? No. What, what what enzymes is he talking about? Alcohol enzymes well, the, for the liver cirrhosis or something? The liver? Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and did the GI guy, what did he do? Well, they did an ultrasound. Mm-hmm. And uh, Was it a boy or they, a girl? I'm teasing. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to make you feel better. This is, this is not a meeting. Actually, was a, it was kind of a hot chick. But, mm. um, but when that came back, they just said I had a fatty liver. And then talking to them, they said the alcohol, of course, aggravates it and makes mm. it worse. But I wasn't to the point of cirrhosis yet. But good. That's really if good. I kept doing what I was doing, which I was drinking a 12-pack a night myself. so, And that was every night for years. And when's the last time you had? When's the, when's your last drink? I'm not. We're not uh, judging. We're not judging. Not at all. Yeah. No, no. I took a different path. My dad did the same thing. My mom and dad were both alcoholics. I okay. grew up with. Mm. Um, and what was even weird about it was my my mom was a psychiatric nurse, so I think she used it to medicate and. Uh, and my dad at one point, yeah, I mean, he was a vodka drinker. My mom was a bourbon drinker. And um, I, they just went cold turkey. Uh, and you, were you able, so when's the last time you had a drink? How long has it been? Okay. Well, what I do is, is I was going from 12 a night, and I told myself that I would do one beer a night. And that's and nights I don't drink anything. But if I do have one, I do have one about every two or three days, and that's about it. So that that keeps it because, like, if you go and you know, you can die from withdrawal. So I, I tell everybody, do not try to quit cold turkey or white knuckle this on your own. But I, I can see the science behind, you know, it's like cigarettes. You start cutting. Yeah, down. you're cutting back. I, I've heard cases where people gone to the Baptist hospital and they bring the person a Bud Light because they're withdrawing. Damn. People, there was a, there was a, a story where. A, a lady hand, uh, handcuffed the husband to the bathroom near the bed where he could sleep in a recliner and such night. For him, he's not going to drink. He, he, and he died. Oh, no. He died from oh, withdrawals. No. You can die from alcohol withdrawals. So oh, I kind of like uh, your, uh, your uh, now, I, dog. I'm not, like saying that this is, I'm not saying that this is for everyone. No, it's you know, not. I'm, sure, just, yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it works for you. what I've been able to do. It's been two months now. With, with so, two months with like one or two or two months of nothing? I, but no, I'm, I mean, I've, I'll go four or five days without anything. And I might go a couple nights in a row while I have one. And are you lying? Are you exaggerating? Like, cause you're no, like, okay. no, <laughs> no, I would. No, I would. No, yeah, 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 I mean, when I was a drug. Yeah. Yeah, uh, um, no. <laughs> all right, Doug, 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 I'm good. But here, here's what I got to tell you. We're going to we're kind of get away from the legal aspect for a second. But. You, you know, By all means, you, 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 the person. drinking, you, 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 you think, you think, uh, you know, the drinking is, uh, you're self-medicating and then, uh, right. and you think it's a cure for, you think it's a solution. 
you know, for, you know, but it's, it's, you know, it, but you, you got to find a solution to why you want to drink. You know, did your mom forget to put jelly on your peanut butter sandwich when you were a kid or something? <laughs> you know, That's so right. you have to, you have to, uh, figure out what make you, you know, the drinking's not the problem. It, the drinking is just no, a sympt- no. the symptom of what's going on here. It's called restless, irritable discontent. So you have mm. to figure out what's making you, because if you don't drink, you're going to find marijuana. You're going to find something else to, uh, you know, that, that will give those uh maybe even food can you like substitute that and just start yeah no 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 i have people who get who get it it could be gambling gambling it could be buying pocket knives you you will you have to figure out substitute it for something yeah and it just drinking happens happens to be the one go-to that everyone does start your own business you will have zero time left on your plate well actually um are you doing any uh, kind of thing are you doing any kind of you know, a rational recovery, some kind of church celebrate recovery. You know, no, nothing. Yeah. I started running again. I used to run many nice. years ago. Yeah, that's a good and I started too. running again, and uh, liver to change my my eating habits too. So I'm running. In the last two months, I've lost about twenty pounds. And good for you. And man. Uh, like I said, I feel I, I feel a lot better. Um, and and knowing that. Uh, Last time I went for my uh, blood work, they said everything was great. So. The enzymes they were talking about. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You know, there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of triathletes mm. who are in recovery, who quit right. drugs well, or quit it. alcohol. Yeah, that's because a job to be yeah, it's addictive. And you know, that's why they call when I go to the gym daily. So I'm, I'm like uh, Doug here. I've been working out and uh, hitting the treadmill and doing you know doing whatever yeah. I can, just trying to get you know. And it's it's an addiction, and and when you get the happy juice release, I'm I never leave the gym without, you know, grinning ear to ear. It gives me the same right. feeling of five it's or six beers. It's the dopamine. It's yeah. the dopamines. That's why they call it dope. That's why yeah, they really? call it dope. So no that's why you that. see people. I gotta get to the gym. I gotta get to the gym. And it's like it. You're self medicating with working out, which is a healthier alternative. Much better. But you still have to figure out why. You know. My biggest drug for for the longest time was uh, my drug of choice was uh, approval from everyone. Mm-hmm. I had right. to have approval. I'm, I'm addicted to that right now. Just so <laughs> y'all know. <laughs> so yeah, so that's uh, that's that. So you definitely have to figure out how being drug free or alcohol free is one thing, but there's a lot of miserable sober people that they, they call them dry drunks. So uh, right. Mm. Pop in while I cough. I'm gonna put the camera on you. <coughs> I'm talking. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, 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 gotcha. Go with it, man. Do, <laughs> rap, do something. <laughs> I, I, missed I, it. Need, I missed it. I just need a second. My apologies. Uh, so, I'm sorry. This, this is not Chad. Chad was the previous guy. This is this, this is Doug. Sorry, Doug, I've Doug, got this. Sorry. Uh, so, perfect. good for you, Doug. I, I really I really admire uh, what you're doing, and I, I, I just say keep on doing it, brother. I mean, that's that's pretty much the only way. When, when are you going to When are you going to quit totally? When are you going to – but mm. you have to – you have to – Work some kind of program, or twenty years will go by, and you're going to start drinking again. I know you're 58, but it can until you learn yeah. how to be happy. Running is not, you know, that's not that's not your complete fix. Let's put right. a band aid on it. That's going to help you deal with the. That's going to release those dopamines, and you're going to get a little bit of a high from that. But you do have to work some kind of, even if it's just. I think sober talk is kind of like a snack between programs, mm. so people are working. Right. You know, they're working intensive outpatient or they're working their AA or whatever they're working, but you have to get some kind of organized routine. So you're like a bag of chips, Tom. I am, dude. I'm like a that's, bag of chips. I'm Tom awesome. Abe. Hey, what? Well, I'm going to change the name from Sober Talk Live to Bag of Chips. <laughs> bag of chips. I love it. Well, brother, well, good luck to you. I'm so happy that, but I'd really like to see you not need those two or three beers, you know, and I'd like to see you completely stop, and I would like for you to Google some kind of support group other than you know, uh, other than Tom, yeah, other than Tom, yeah. <laughs> like I said, do they have meetups? Like you know that that website that they have an app. It's called Meetup. Do they have like stuff for for this? Well, my here, wife would kill me. Yeah, man. Oh, it's not that kind of meetup. No, 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 no. It's no, not that kind of meetup. Uh, oh, okay. Not, not Match. dot com. It's like it, they do. I know they do like kayaking. They do rock. There's rock climbing groups, swimming, cycling, uh, yoga, right? Yeah, but he still has to fix his. He still has to figure out what it is that's wow. making it's it. triggering yeah. it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, I got you. I got Carl you. Martin, let's, let's just jump here. Carl Martin, a regular on the show, says, how much money would be lost if the 25% of humans who abuse alcohol stop doing so? 70% of all the alcohol is consumed by 25% of the population. 
Think about how much money would be lost by so many uh, if uh, if we had sick people drinking alcohol. I don't know. Police. Yeah, he's, he's so... I think Carl's encouraging people to not quit. I don't know. Uh, this collar's disease is very alive and will take off at any moment. Eric Drake, he's right, dude. Right now, you're self-medicating mm. with the working out, but you need to get involved in some kind of program, some kind of structure program. Uh, I'm working a 12-step program, and I'm learning. I'm finally, you know, 50-plus here, finally happy and finally getting content. I'm not, I'm not extremely insecure. I'm not extremely cocky. I'm right there like in the middle. Guy. Yeah, I'm like you, dude. I'm, I'm like Larry the DUI guy. All right, uh, but that's yeah. But that's that's a thing. You have to, you know. I would, you know, someone said on the show says we're not, we're not good. We're not bad people trying to be good. We are broken people trying to get fixed, mm. and just right. really being confident and not, and not worrying about what everybody thinks. And I'm, you know, I no longer have that drug. I'm getting better. Where my my drug of choice is everybody's approval. I would like call people. Are you, I mean, I felt like when you left, I kind of said that. Was that weird? Did I do? And I really do that. Did that? Are we okay? Are we cool? Being you know, just you know, business associates, whatever. Sure. And it's just like, what? and they're like, huh? But Especially they, with social media, all those you know, the, we're oh, addicted geez. to the likes. The, remember the inbox one article when Facebook just came out, like how we're addicted we are when we see that one little red one. Yeah, I had an boy said I. That was like an, a dopamine rush that I we had get. Fifty-eight likes on my picture, man. Oh my oh, god, are you kidding me? I wish I was. Yeah, I've gotten I'm hate not, mail not, for a month. I got, I got three and a half. Bro, well, did you? I don't even know where the half came from. Uh, my daughter, we she just we had a graduation party. And I posted a picture of her and myself, and I said, and she had twelve hundred likes, and uh, just or don't know no, eight thousand likes, and something. Called, and I, and I just put on my what? my son's birthday was yesterday. He's got like a thousand likes, and uh, I need to be friends with you. I, yeah, yeah you got to, you got to. But uh, well, uh, Doug, uh, do me a favor, man. Don't don't quitting drinking is one thing. That's like, drinking is not the problem. Your head's the problem, right. and you got to fix that. Freud that shit. Freud that shit. All right, buddy. Tom, <laughs> thanks for calling, buddy. Thanks, Tom. All right. And we got a guy, We got Steve I got to get in here. Oh. Uh, my name is Austin. I got my first DUI when I was 19 years old. Before my DUI, I crashed my car into a ditch, and luckily I was on the right side uh, of the of the. Uh, I crashed my car into the bridge. Was is that right? I was right side. I was right side of the road because the left side was a cliff that dropped down hundreds of feet. I realized I had oh, a problem geez. after I woke up one morning and realized I had. Uh, pissed into my friend's refrigerator and clothes hamper. That sounds I, like a story there. That does. Uh, there's a there's a You're person still friends with that person. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we're about to find out maybe. We had a guy that I've been trying to get on the show, mm. Stephen, and I gotta find Stephen's number because, uh, hey Tom, I'm Xavier. I've been clean and sober since. Tw- okay. Uh, good morning, Tom. A lot of people let their egos talk. Uh, these are. Let's get to. I mean, um, so how long have you been alcohol free? Uh, two years and uh, almost seven months, I guess. It would be. Did you? I know you don't want to talk about it. You're a lawyer. You don't. But did you have any rock bottom stories or anything? Or com- back in your comedy club days, anything <laughs> weird? See, well, luckily, I think the thing is, you have to capture the rock bottom before you get to rock bottom. And I guess if mine was ever looming, I don't think it was. If mine was ever looming, I caught it before I got there because of my exposure, my infinite exposure to alcohol due to me being a DUI lawyer and having all these clients that are represented who, and I mean, once you, I, I'm a very passionate individual. So any client that comes my way, I, I mean, I, I'm almost borderline become friends with them. And I, when I take their case, if we go to trial, I want to take care of their case as if it was my case. So I become very entrenched in their life. And I think that was one of the things that I basically lived like 1500 lives at this point. And it taught me a lot about alcohol and drugs. That's, uh, I, I uh, uh, that's that's what my therapist. I have an addiction therapist that I work with. One of my one of my bag of tricks, and and I get people who I got the sober cell at the bottom there. Text the sober cell five zero two three nine six eight three seven four. Text your name. Do not call that number because it's not piping. I'll probably hear so you. So to answer your question, I probably hit rock bottom about seventeen hundred times. Yeah, and just you know, it wasn't me. It wasn't my life. I well, and that's kind of what's going on with me when I hear these. I get someone into so they you know first of all I get them Medicaid because they have no insurance they can't you know they don't have any pri- get private care so I find out what state through and I get them in they get out the first day they get locked up again mm. um, and, and my my therapist my addiction therapist Jane Gaynor she's like Dude, you, be careful be really really careful because this is threatening 
your sobriety. Mm-hmm. And you can't be everybody's personal Jesus who's calling you at 1 a.m., you know, because I can pick up the sober cell that late. I, sure. I pick it up because I can hear it vibrating. And, it's uh, tough, man, because you want to help people, but you can't sacrifice your own well-being for that, you know? Right, right. And so I, I'm really... So let me, while you're doing that, let sure. me go ahead and, and launch back into the whole fee thing that we started on. So once you're, you know, you hire your attorney, you hire your lawyer, hopefully, you know, the, the lawyer will take care of your case. And if you're pleading guilty, here's the thing. So in Kentucky, the DUI will be on your record for a decade, 10 years from the date of the plea, not from the date of the charge, from the date of the plea. So if you plead a day, even though the charge was two years ago, the clock starts today. So now, for five years, your insurance goes up. You have to pay fines and court costs. You have to get an ignition interlock if you want to drive. You've already paid your lawyer. You're going to be paying higher insurance premiums. We are not an SR-22 state, but if you are in an SR-22 state, you're SR-22 state! What is SS-20? What is SR? I have no clue. It's, okay. It's like a special insurance like for like all those people who nice. like have a DUI and stuff. Gotcha. Um, habitual offenders especially. Uh, but even on a first offense. So now, basically, you're paying all these fines, court costs. You have to get your license reinstated. You know, in Kentucky, it's 40 bucks. In California, it's 500 or like 300 or whatever it right. is. Right, okay. So depending on which jurisdiction you're in. When all is said and done, after you have paid everything on your first offense DUI, you can easily rack up fifteen, twenty thousand dollars 20000 30000 40000 50000 50, depending on which jurisdiction you're in. So they say a DUI costs ten grand. That's in a cheap state. Very cheap state like Kentucky, maybe Alabama, Mississippi. You know, Georgia is probably closer to like twenty thousand. Same with Ohio, Indiana, Michigan could be closer to. Do you hear that, Carl Martin? California could be closer to thirty thousand. Georgia, for a good DUI uh, attorney. It's it's just Florida can be also twenty five or thirty easily when all is said and done. I'm talking, you know, spread out over the next five ten years. Mm-hmm. You're paying in premiums. You're paying for the ignition interlock. You may be having to pay for Ubers while you can drive if you don't have an ignition interlock. It's very easy. It's get very 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 expensive. Sure, sure. I, uh, real quick, if you see at the bottom of the screen, our sponsor is KYSBestHemp.com. That's Kentucky's best hemp. They do have THC free uh, oil, CBD oil, and creams and things of that nature. And uh, if you use so, if you use the uh, promo code Tom thirty upon checking out, you will save thirty percent on your purchase. That's nice. KYS Best Hemp I wrote a jingle. Check it out. KYS Best Hemp dot com. <laughs> KYS Best Hemp dot com. I dig uh, it. I love that it. Was, yeah, I did. It was a little retro sound. I was listening to HES radio and I heard, call the plumber whose name is his number. I wrote that. And uh, Cunningham, Cunningham, overhead door. I like nine jingles nice. back to back. That's my that was my world. I was going to be a singer, songwriter, jingle writer. one of those. So, yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm your guy. Yeah, that's we'll do some trade. I said, hey, man, this is a voucher. Mm-hmm. I'm down. What's up, Tom? Is this, is this Steven? Who am I talking to? This, this is Steven. You are talking to Tom. Did you get the guy? Is this the guy you want to talk to? Well, yeah, we, Stephen, I've been, we've been he, uh, texting for like a month and a half now. I'm just, I've been just now, well, anyway, I had a brain fart. Nice. So tell me your story, Stephen. What's happening? Uh, not a whole lot. Just, uh, you know. Thanks for coming on. Work no, for, <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Um, continuing to work uh, my 12-step program. Nice. Um, nice. You know, daily. I, I texted you earlier. I was still at a men's meeting and, um. You know, I, I go to meetings every day. Um, I have been very fortunate to never been in trouble and never had to use Larry. Um, never had to use Larry. However, yeah. never never had to use Larry. However, I, I know that the road that I was headed down, um, I would eventually need a Larry. Um, they mm. talk about the yet. You know, I, I, I hadn't been in jail yet. I yet. hadn't been arrested Remember yet. The, the, the rock bottom we were it, talking about? Yeah. That sounds like he, that's what he's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But yeah. but when you, I, when, but you say you yeah. haven't had a DUI, you haven't had a, you know, uh, you've been arrested and all that good stuff. Uh, did it ever affect your family? Every day. Um, every you day. know, it, it affected my family every day. I've ruined relationships. I, I've ruined everything in my life for um, almost 10 years. And, you know, what's, what's a crazy story is, when I was, uh, you know, I was a heavy drug user, um, and I got pulled over one day. I had uh, a bunch of cocaine, a bunch of Xanax, um, and I am just out of my mind. I, I don't know what's going on. You I got pulled, pulled over by over. a cop with all this stuff in your vehicle? Or in your system? Yep. And, and, and no, in, in my system and in my vehicle. Um, I, uh, I, I, mean, I live in North Carolina. Well, I, I'm, uh, I live in North Carolina, so I'm, uh, 
I, you, we can have an open carry pistol. So I get pulled over. I, I put my gun up on the dash and I say, Hey, you know, I just want you to know my gun's up there. And he smart. goes, thanks. So you smart. Know. Is it? That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Listen, I, cause they know they went, once they look you up, if you have a concealed carry, they know. And, and if you don't tell them, you can get in trouble or shot or worse. You know, they don't, I, have, I, carry, I carry a gun, and they don't. Have, the concealed carry is now gone away, right? Well, we're an open carry state now. Open yeah. carry, but state, I yeah. mean, they still do. Like, you can renew your concealed carry. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can. So, yeah. so Stephen, so you put the cop, you put the gun on the dash. Tell me, the cop was so impressed of your honesty <laughs> that he didn't look for the coke and the drugs and everything. It's about to happen, Tom. Well, he he knew I was messed up, right? So he pulls me out the car. And uh, by this time, four share or four police were were on hand. Um, they're they're giving me the the whole field sobriety test. And I I fail every field sobriety test. Walk in the line, standing on one foot. I fail every sobriety test, right? And I and I told the guy, you know, um, hey, you know, I haven't used anything, this and that. And <laughs> thankful, nice. th- thankfully, I'm 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 a type one diabetic, right? Um, so I looked down at my, my insulin pump and I said, Hey, my blood sugar's low. Oh, and he goes, well, how low is it? And I said, Hey, it's uh, it, I made up a number. It's, it's 42, which is low. Yeah. So they were like, all right, well, let's get the paramedics out here. So the paramedics come and, um, they check my blood sugar. All the police are in the ambulance. They check my blood sugar and it's, it's up to 80 now. And, um, I don't know by the grace of God or, you know, higher power. I don't know how it happened, but Did you take like a it, sugar it, pill or like pretend to take a it, sugar pill. So that's, Oh, that, yeah, that's why it's higher now. It was 40. Now it's 80. Exactly. And, uh, the police looked at the He's paramedics and said, Hey, if, if, uh, his blood sugar is low, will that cause him to drive erratically? And she looked at him and said, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So he this said, all right, you're free to go, but yeah. I'm, I'm not going to let you drive your car. And I, I, got out of that situation just like many others i i don't know how but um you I'm have very a guardian angel you just to... thank your gods man yeah you but Larry said you have a guardian angels uh that's uh it's definitely a higher power for sure somebody's looking out man. for me well here's a, here's a good news so i'm, I'm kind of i'm not going to i don't love your story i think it's kind of fascinating it's uh, cool but story. it's it's a yeah, it's a cool story. But it's, for all these people who've know, been affected by get, being killed, you know, the Larry Mahoney's of the world, I, I'm know. just I'm just mesmerized because I'm like that's that's one of the most impressive you, right, stories right. But ever. here's what I here's what I love about about Stevens that he's working his steps now. Yes, and you are getting daily. help daily. And me too, me too. And uh, so it's you know, again, you're not a you know a bad guy trying to be good. You're a broken guy trying to be fixed. So so I don't want to glorify your story. It is a badass story. Don't get me Touché. wrong. But but I no, do, absolutely. but I, I but I, it, it is it, we have to catch it. How long have you been sober? April third, twenty twenty was my sober date. So you're so over, a year now. over a year. Yeah. Well, congrats. Yep. Congrats, man. And what what state are you in again? North Carolina. North Carolina. Wow. Okay. We got a lot of a lot of people from North Carolina come on the show. It's yeah. interesting. Uh, we got a lot of people from uh, Kentucky texting too. So. Stephen, uh, I got one more caller who who, who uh, talk, is wanting to talk uh, to our guest. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, but well, c- congrats to you. I'm very I'm very uh, happy that you're working the steps. Now you work them daily, and uh, have you have you fallen off the wagon at all? Not not yet. By the grace of God, you know nice. I uh, knock on wood. I um yeah, exactly. I I uh, have a sponsor. I help people out. You know daily. Um, like I told you earlier, I was in, in a meeting. I go to meetings every day. Do you sponsor um, anyone yourself? You know, it, so I, uh, when I went to, yeah, you, you, you don't have a spot. You don't have any sponsees, do you? Are you there yet? I don't think that you're. So I, I did have, um, about six or seven sponsees when I, when I went to treatment and lived in Charleston for a year. Yeah. Um, however, when I moved back, my sponsor told me he does not want me sponsoring anybody for, um, you know, six months to a year. Um, which I, I follow his directions because we all know when I run my life, I run it into the ground. Sure. Um, so I follow his directions and I still help people out, but I don't sponsor anybody. Yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not until, armed. People ask me all the time to be their sponsor, but dude, I'm, I'm not, I'm not armed with the, the facts about the steps. You know, I'm still fascinated by, you know, a lot of people step, they, uh, they'll skip huh. step four and five and they'll, uh-huh. and you know, because I mean, they'll be sober for thirty years and go out because they did not work those resentments. Well, see, since I'm, hey, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm like, I'm not entirely familiar with the, the twelve steps. I mean, I've mm-hmm. read them on paper, like at they, one yeah, point, but they but, don't make sense until you have someone explain them to you. Right, and, and well, that's probably it. Yeah. And 
to me, I've always been taught like once you, you know, to learn a subject, you know, first you, you hear about it, then you read about it, then you learn it. And then when you can teach it to someone else, that's when you Absolutely. know that, you know, that's why I asked him. Do, yeah. do you do you know do you sponsor anyone? That's the only reason I asked that question. It's my lack of familiarity with the subject. I've I've gotten so lucky. My sponsor owns treatment facilities. He for he he lived in a homeless shelter, a rehab shelter for for one year, and he is a machine when it comes. He's kind of like a drill sergeant, and we and you know, and we we live in the same town, so we work out together and stuff. And uh, he uh he's like, here's what you see what you're doing. You're you're, you're living these steps now. I'm like. Because I'm such an idiot, I can't, you know, being dyslexic. You can't see outside yourself. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody got to get out of your head. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. Uh, well, dude, that is uh, so great. I'm so happy for you. Someone from three one seven is trying to call the sober cell. We cannot pick up the sober cell. We can only if you want to text it and let us call you. We can. Again, our guest is uh, if you're in the state of Kentucky. Our guest is Larry, the DUI, DUI guy foreman. And uh, Larry, uh, we'll, uh, we'll put his name and number on the thing if you're looking for a uh, Carl Martin says that he'll pay all your, uh, all your fees to become a, uh, an attorney, a, a licensed attorney in the state of Georgia. And, uh, oh, wow. So, yeah, I mean, he, he's just, uh, he, he, uh, Carl's good now, but there was a time where he just felt beat Carl, up. you are awesome, bro. Yeah. For some mad respect. That's right. So, uh, but, uh, well, dude, I will talk uh, with you down the road, Steve, and I'd love to have you back on. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me and uh, good luck. And for anybody listening that's new, um, you know, what do you have to lose? Try it out and uh, see what happens. A hundred percent. Let me tell, let me just tell this person that I can recent calls. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you in a little bit. All right, Tom. See you, bud. Uh, this, I've just got to text this person. Yeah, no, sometimes, go for it. Sometimes they're really, really, this is Mike. Uh, uh, I have, I have to call from another Line, uh, is she? Uh, I have to call from another line. Text me, text me what's going on. Can but you we, not receive texts on the the calling line, or do you not? Want I get no, I get texts, but if they call me. It doesn't go through the mixing board. No, no, I, I oh, gotcha. So gotcha. I'm gonna pick up, and I'm just gonna be. Ta- it's gonna be dead air. Or but ass, but so. I'm saying, like on the other phone, does it? You can't do both calls and text, or I don't well, know, I'm just I, I'm I'm not, trying to I, protect I, this. Is my this. first time on this show. No, no, no. You're right. I'm again. I, I don't. That would be doing it right. And I, don't like, <laughs> I don't like doing things right, Larry. So. <laughs> Sorry to call you that's out like a, that, Tom. No, that's I did not okay. mean to do that. Uh, so this is our. Uh, we are calling uh, our last caller here, uh, unless this guy. Um, let's see. My name is Austin. I got my first EUI. Um, Let's see, calling you from 502. I really, really, so uh, how long How long have you lived in Louisville? This is what we call saving. In, <laughs> um, since 2015, but I lived in Kentucky since 2005. Yeah, okay. I lived in Breckenridge County, if you guys know where. Uh, how far is that from Louisville, Breckenridge County? Uh, 67.5 miles, exactly, to get to the University of Louisville, because I commuted for a decade. Wow. That was a pain in the ass. I bet it was. Oh, my God. Man, I racked up, like, collectively racked up, like, a quarter million miles on three cars. It was bad. But, hey, it was worth it. What kind of car did you drive to get there to, here we're calling this guy now? So I had a 2001 Chevy Malibu. Then That I had made a, it that many miles? Well, it died at about 120, I believe. Okay. Um, then my mom had a Honda Accord. And that, they last longer than you on the last. That, we still have the Honda. The Honda's still around. Wow. wow. And, then, <laughs> and then I got a Mercedes. That was my first car in 2014, mm-hmm. I think is when I bought it, 2014 or 15. And now I drive a nicer car. Good. Okay. So this is our last caller. This is uh, this is OG Tyler Chatted before when you first started. Had my sentencing hearing today as w- day one of my sobriety. Wow. Okay. But that was back in April. And the, uh, hey, Tom. Hey, buddy. How's it going, brother? Good. How are you? I'm good. So you said you could speak. Uh, I can elaborate on the cost. 5700 I owe. So you still owe this? Yes. And uh, tell us, uh, um, tell my guest, Larry. What's going on? Yeah. yeah, what's going on? So tell us, tell well, us your story, because I forget talking to you. Um, well, last time I talked to you, I was on day one of sobriety. Okay. I just um, when was this? Got into probation. This was April. This was back on uh, April eighth. April eighth. Yeah. 
two months ago. Yeah. Almost to the day. Today's the, the seventh. Today's the seventh. So tomorrow will yeah. be so you're pushing it are you pushing a year tomorrow or have you fallen off the wagon a few times? No, I'm still on the wagon. Good so you, okay, man. and are you working any kind of a uh some kind of, you know, extended, you know, uh um, program? So my probation is very um I have to report every day, Monday through Friday. Okay. Nice. Um, I have a therapist on hand that I meet every week. And I actually, um, coming up tomorrow, um, I'm actually going to be approved for stage two of my probation. So you meet with a th- th- you meet with a therapist, and this is an alcohol, yeah. drug, a therapist of some sort? Okay, good, good. What is stage two? Yeah, yeah. Two? So it's called AIMS. And um, so you have to go every day, Monday through Friday. Good. Good. Love it. Um, Love it. We go to cafe. um, And then uh, we have appointments. So I have to go to my group meeting tomorrow, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Is uh, mental health something rather we meet for an hour, talk about how our week is going and everything. Nice. Um, And then – I meet with my therapist once a, once a week, and then uh, the main chick, her name is Tish. I meet yeah, with her once a week. She sounds hot. The main chick, Tish. This is main chick. Tish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She's, I can just tell. I can she's tell a by the name. freaking stunner. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. So, uh, what, so, are, so, what kind of money did you, did you get caught up in some legalities when this first happened? Uh, did you get a DUI? Yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah, it was my fourth one. Kentucky or what state? Yeah, what state? Colorado. Colorado. It was my fourth. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I had three in Kansas, and I moved here to Colorado about close to four and a half years ago. And then they did an NCIC on you, I bet. And, found and I three and in I caught another one. Yeah. So yeah. the third one in Kansas was a felony. So this is my second felony DUI. How old are you? Unfortunately. Second um, felony DUI. I'm 40. So you're doing these daily groups and our groups on Tuesdays and this and that. You're 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 active in whatever program you chose. You're telling me. Well, I was fortunate enough to get probation that is is more of my terms. Like I have to go there every day. Well, you know, I'm confused. Is, pro, is probation is that? I mean, is this a pro- once all your this legal is supervised probation? Like he has to report to a. a PO but are you work every, every day, Monday through yeah. Friday? Okay, help I me. Have to be there for I don't. Minutes. I don't understand though. Is this just to check in on you and take your blood pressure? Or is this for you to help your brain and keep you mm-hmm. and trying to figure out? No, it's nothing. Just, just to make sure you're not screwing up what the judge told you to do. No, well, that's not fixing your brain no. though. No, that's, that's not that's fixing not your head. About. So I'm my question is screw the. The probe that's going to go away. That time's going to cure that. Five years from now, it's are a you... very good program. Okay, help me, help me understand, because you're, um, you're... Ames is called is is for different. Alt, um, alternative to incarcerations for something with mental illness or something like that. So do, do they? Do you guys talk about addiction and talking about resentments in your brain and talking about yes. cravings and things no, like I take, that? I take it back. That's, okay. that's way I, better we, than anything. We do that before. every Tuesday. Follow we around. have an hour meeting. That's like drug court type of probation that we have. We do have that. It, it, yeah, okay. it's very close. Very okay. close. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. okay. That's different. Yeah. That's okay. different. Okay. Yeah, very close to drug court. I've been I've been through drug court. It's very close, but it's more intense. So I just have a. Right now, I'm just in one group of mental health, something or other. I do on Tuesdays for an hour. We get together, we talk about the week, and then we talk about a topic. Um, and then uh, I meet with my therapist. There's a therapist on duty five days a week, and I meet with her once a week. But coming after this this week, I will be going to every other week because I'm going to phase two. There's four phases. This is the one year program. I get it. okay, so I get it. So you're you're working it, you're working it, you're in a good place now. Uh, I am I'm doing it flawlessly. I'm I'm nice. actually kinda of proud of myself. No, dude, dude I'm proud of you. Freaking awesome. It's freaking you. awesome. It's freaking awesome. Uh there's so, one yeah. there's one guy struggling here. So you and I are gonna wrap up in about forty five seconds. So you spent how much money did you spend on legal fees or you owe now? Well, uh so I had to save up 
it was part of the probation. I had to set up a payment plan, 50 bucks a month towards my $5,700 in fees that I have for this DUI. Wow. Well, so how much did you pay off? I mean, I, you have to pay something. You know, it's, it's COVID season still, kind of. So and you still owe the full amount we're all broke. To, to your lawyer? Yeah. So you still you owe the full amount to your lawyer? Well, I had a public pretender. <laughs> Wait, public pretender. Wait, hold on. So, if you had the public defender, they they call them public pretenders because they feel like they don't do any work. I I, I strongly actually, agree. she was she was freaking bone to the wall, freaking badass. She sounds so. oh, nice. Okay, good. So that she wasn't a public pretender. She was an actual public badass defender. Yeah. Okay. Just actually, sure. yes, good. you're you're correct. Okay. 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 And you, but you don't. Yes, you you were paying fifty seven hundred to the system, not to her, right? Yeah, there was no fees because who pays her? The government. Huh, all right. Yeah, public defenders are government agents. Believe it or not. I I qualified because during COVID season, you know, I I was laid off and and I'm just on unemployment right now. But okay, but I have a job you. coming up, and we'll see how that works. And what was your first name again? O. G. Tyler. O.G. Tyler. O.G. Tyler. I knew. I recognize. Original. Yeah, I was one of the first callers on your show. I remember this. I think Carl no, was our yeah. first. Yeah, that's awesome, buddy. Uh, well, can, one can, one of the first. Ones. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, uh, I, I remember the first time I did it. Ah, uh, oh, Jesus, it's wearing on me. It's really wearing on me. I'll, I'll mute you for a second, Larry. Uh, so uh, I got to call this guy. He's going to quit cold turkey uh, this Wednesday. So I'm going to. I said you were my last caller. I lied. I'm going to call one more guy, and I will talk with you soon. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Bob. Good talking to you. The, Larry, what do you say to law enforcement? What is that one? By Carl Martin. Carl Martin. On it's the a, bottom. Uh, right here? Yeah. Larry, what do you say to law enforcement officers who pulls you over and you believe that you are, oh, and that they, that you are over point zero eight? Can, can you zoom in on me when I say this? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm coming into Larry. Here we go. Shut your freaking mouth. Do not speak. Do not talk. Do not answer any questions. The less you say, the better off you're going to be. Do not do any tests. Go to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Sit in that cell. Get released the next day. So you're saying maybe don't, don't talk too much when they pull you over. So now this is all, let's, so <laughs> no. I'm so when his Carl's question was Larry, what do you say to a law law enforcement officer who pulls you over and you believe that you are over point zero eight and you're saying. Shut your freaking mouth. Okay. All right. I'm going to call this guy. Well, we got a guy in the, uh, I think he's Indianapolis area, or he's a, oh, geez, come on now. Well, we could go on. Are you are you roasting? You got a full suit on. I turned the air off so I wouldn't come through the mics. Are you roasting right uh, now? No, I, I, I generate my own heat, and I have a cooling system. I have an air duct system in the <laughs> Dude, back. I want to get one. Yeah, it's like my kidneys are self-regulating. That's awesome, Larry. DUI guy. Larry, the DUI attorney. You got Dude, it, you got to come back on. Oh, absolutely! I love this. This guy. is this, this is, is fun. Awesome. This is this is fun. And we'll have to. Pay, I got to put your. Can I put like your email or something down in the? Oh, thing? absolutely! I'll so. give you my website. I'll, I'm actually building a, um, uh, a spaceship landing page. Oh, yeah, that's You're it. Building a spaceship. Yeah, I want to go. I want to apologize there. about my hair. You just look so good over there. I'm like, God, looks like I'm on a bad day. <laughs> hey, oh, it's yeah. Tom. Can you turn your computer down? You look so good over there. I'm like, God, looks like I'm on a bad day. There, you turn your com turn your computer down, and we can talk. But he's uh, so you said I'm quitting this Wednesday. Drink every day, quitting cold turkey. Uh, yeah. All right. So t all right. So you got your computer down. So I'm not. See, we're, there's a delay. So I'm hearing me like ten seconds behind you. So uh, how much do you drink? Uh, usually about a case a day. All right. You know how Larry just says, "Shut your freaking mouth." I want to say, "Go to your freaking doctor." I love that. Yeah, do not try to quit cold turkey when you're drinking a case of beer a day. Mm -hmm. And that's I just, well, because you can die from the withdrawals. People die all the time. More people die from withdrawals of alcohol than they do other drugs. Your you body can, gets used to it, right? Like yeah. You, it's, you know, like, it's like a, you have more alcoholic cells than you do non-alcoholic cells. And there's been cases in the emergency room, they'll give a person a beer. People die all the time when they try to cold turkey and white knuckle it. I'm not saying don't quit. I'm just saying go to your, uh, if you're drinking a, how old of a guy are you, brother? And what's your first name, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Michael. Michael. Michael, you live up in Indiana somewhere? Uh, yeah, Avon, Indiana. Avon, Indiana. 
I love you to live right south of Mary Kay there in Mary Kay, Indiana. Hmm. That's a bad joke. So uh, Michael is drinking. Guys, listen. We got Michael from Indiana drinking a case of beer. He says this Wednesday he's quitting cold turkey. So you yeah. said you said you quit several months at this time. Mm. Just fell off the wagon and can't even remember uh, where I parked. It. Okay, so I I get it. I get it. So it sounds like you've been successful with quitting cold turkey in the past. You're one of the lucky ones. I'm telling you, people die all the time from quitting cold turkey. And you may consider uh, what what you need to do. You need to figure out why you're drinking in the first place. Uh, maybe well, go ahead. You want to tell me a little bit? I won't, I won't control the conversation. Tell me what's going on. No, I mean, it's just like beer and stuff like that. It's not like hard alcohol or anything like that. So oh, it's still it's still uh, bad. It's still bad. It's really I, uh, I almost died drinking beer. Um, so uh, – what do you what do you drink? What do you are you married? You have kids? You work? Tell me about your life. Yeah, I have, uh, I'm married. Yeah. I have uh, two kids. Mm -hmm. uh, Good for you. One's eleven. One, eighteen months. Oh, big difference. Yeah. You you work? You do you drink on the job? No, uh, not a no, not, not at all. Um, kind of like an after work thing. Yeah, it's after work thing. I go to bed early. Wake up early, go to work. So during the come week, come back home. Do, during the week, do you tell me you like your? What time do you go into work? Uh, this morning it was like four thirty. Okay. Sneak and I was out home at three. You ever sneak out truck over lunch like I did? Have a couple beers? No, never. Wow. So you, I'm a heavy equipment mechanic. So oh no, wow, never. yeah, that would be the end of his career. Well, all right. So I need you to do me two things. I need you to go see your doctor this time. So how long you you said you quit for what seven months, or seven months ago? Several months. Several uh, months. Okay. Like, uh, all right. This past winter, I quit for three months, and uh, no side effects, no nothing. I'm just uh. I can pick up something and put it down and no, not have any side effects from it. But <clears throat> today, um, like I drank myself, my wife and kids are on vacation and I drank myself retarded all weekend long. And, uh, today I was like profusely sweating and like just felt like death was coming over me until I got back home and, the Down Syndrome Confederation of the World is going to come kill you, you right now. That doesn't teach you to quit. Yeah. I don't know what it does. You, know? that, you just said you yeah. drank yourself special needs, but you used another <laughs> word. Oh, geez. This comes from a father who has a special needs. All right. So, yeah. so anyway, so uh, why why do you think you started drinking back? Did you had, were you not helping your brain? Drinking again, you're self-medicating with the booze. You just feel like you have to drink to be... You know, it goes back to some kind of trauma or abandonment as a child. Did your 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 dad beat you or anything weird like that? Uh, I was taken away from my parents whenever I was okay. ten years old. Well, that's abandonment. Oh, that's wow, yeah, that's, that's, that's trauma. Be... Not like ninety five percent of the time, it always goes back to. And I was, and yeah, I, was I mean Freud. Literally, I, I know I kept made that joke, but earlier, but dead serious. I mean, Freud talked about that. Like, you look at because he he you know. His whole thing about um, was it not, not psychotherapy? It's a psychoanalysis, mm -hmm. um, and he he basically said, uh, "Who's this? Who's this? Said this? Uh, uh, Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud. Okay. Yeah, he he was analyzing people by the hundreds, probably by the thousands. And one conclusion he came to, and this is what he wrote in his book. He said, uh, it all goes back to childhood. Basically, every single individual who had like some serious trauma that they were dealing with, that they, why they couldn't move forward in life, comes back to an early age when they were a kid." And when you're able to finally let go of this stuff, man, mm -hmm. and uh, and what uh, what was your what was your first name again? Indiana, what was it? Michael. Uh, Michael. Michael. Okay, thank you. Uh, Michael, this is going to be a vicious cycle. How how old of a guy are you? You're not forty. It was the last caller. How old are you? I'm thirty five. You're thirty five. This is. Well, uh, I'm thirty four. I'll be thirty five in July. It's about my age. I'm thirty. I just turned thirty three. Wow. So is my minivan. Wow. You guys <laughs> suck. <laughs> So it's none of the vehicles. I lied. I'm 55. Yeah. So, so, so this is going to be a vicious cycle. It happened. I did it for years. I did it for 25 years, where I would drink until something bad happened. And I go, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And uh, six months go by, a year will go by. 
even went two years once, and then something had life got really lifey, and I couldn't, I didn't have the skills, I didn't have the tools in my my toolbox to deal with it. So with that, I started yeah. self medicating with the booze, and I did yeah. That. See, that's the problem I have. Yeah, well, like, here, I'm, I'm good until something happens, and then I start self medicating yeah. myself. You know, people people ride people ride me out, but I gotta tell you, if you want to stop the loop, the obsession, the or what you know, I can tell you I don't care if you don't have the insurance, I will help you get insurance. Do you have insurance? No, I have I have great insurance. All right. Well like I mean my son was in the NICU for twenty one days and I only paid thirty four dollars. Yeah, well so you need some intense treatment. I would highly recommend some and people look this is I don't cost, think I need that. Um <sighs> I think I need uh, denial stage. I believe. Yeah, he's definitely uh, some encouragement along the way. All right. Well, let me tell you. If you can quit, if you can go to your, and let me just. This is the free treatment advice I'm going to give you. Doesn't okay. matter what you're, if you, because you're. I'm never going to talk. I know. I know in a million years, I'm never going to talk you into going get some help from some people. Know what the hell they're talking about. You need to go to your doctor and tell him I drink a case of beer a day. I'm going to quit. Tom May from Sober Talk has begged me to go to you before I go white knuckle this. And once you do that, you need to find a program. I'm going to recommend the 12-step program because it's working for me right now. It's not the only program out there. There's all kinds of programs out there. But you need to figure out how can you let being taken away from mom and dad at age 10, how can you break this vicious cycle? And right now, you just you're going it's going to you're going to be 35 here soon it's just going to keep on doing it until you get in your life is the quality of your life is going to be so much better once you learn how to let go of the resentments and how to be happy without the booze one day life will get lifey again and you're going to go f this i need a beer so i'm not let's just take the treatment word out of it I really, really think tune in. Sober talk is like a sober talk is just, you, you know, and you got to do the work. You got to do the work. You can't go to the gym and watch people work out and wonder why the hell you're not getting buff. You have to put about in the that work. all the time. Like I, I used to go to the gym all the time and watch people. And I thought I was going to come out real buff and it never worked. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. I was sitting there with, I was I with Funyuns and a big red, drinking a big red. But yeah, and, and, yeah, people, and you guys are the one talking all the time. So how can I get a word in edge with? Thanks for calling, Collar. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> no, I'm trying to give you some tough love here. Listen, listen Tom is telling you the real No, thing. because you're in denial and you're going to sit here and you're going to call me, well, I don't need help. Tell me tell me your, what no, your plan I'm is. No, I'm telling you I would like help, but just I know what I need to do. Okay, tell me your game plan. I just want to know what your plan is. I suggest it going to your family doctor, telling him how much you drink, and getting into some oh, kind of program. All right. Well, tell me about how are you going to What's work on Michael's brain? What's your plan? Me, I'm all or nothing. So, you know, like uh, the Blake Shelton song, the five one, I have 13. That's me. I I'm think not. he's stuck on the whole, I'm going to quit. I have no, I have no problem. I, I, I believe this guy. Back. I can tell this guy's a badass. I can tell too. Yeah. But I know that no, he, I'm not a badass. well, but I'm you can quit. I know I can like tell it. that you can quit. There's yeah. no doubt in my mind that you can quit. But when it happens, when they tell you that your wife has stage four cancer or your mom or your sister, or your aunt, someone, something really, really bad happens and your addiction is like waiting for you to have a lifey a moment. When you have a trigger, what kind of tools are you going to use to not drink? That's where I need to help at. And that's why I was trying to say, I'm sorry I got upset because I get, I get passionate about this because it, in my yeah. program, I have to help other people mm -hmm. to stay sober. Yeah. I have to do it. It's tw step 12. And I love doing it. And it threatens my, when, as long as I just want you to leave here knowing that we advise you, to, your doctor already knows it, but you know, that's I, that scares me. Have drinking that much beer and trying to go cold turkey. I would yeah. recommend. I am, you're not inside Michael's all. body, you know. Yeah, like yeah. You, yeah. So I would. Me, I know myself. So okay. I well, 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 I know you can quit, dude. I just know how in the hell are you going to be happy? And when you're eight year old and you're eleven year old or whatever, how are they going to? You know, being alcohol free is one thing, but being alcohol free and a great dad and being happy that's a totally another. No, thing. me and my wife, we already we 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 talked about this. Like, okay. I have signs, like, if I hold my hand up, don't talk to me, don't do nothing, just uh, leave me alone. That's, and that's if I a, hold up all five fingers, okay. that's... Uh, Would you consider yeah. going to a rational recovery or some church that has this celebrate recovery 
anything with the word recovery in it and say, hey, guys, it sucks that I'm wired this way. I've quit drinking many a times. I have no problem quitting, but when life gets lifey, I want to start back. Would you find, you know, again, I'm That's doing the 12. I'm That's doing a great the, question. Yeah. Are you willing to, do, to go some kind of, and look, you just can't go to a meeting like I do and sit there for three months with your arms crossed, hoping the guy, the badass next to you is going to rub off on you. Like what I finally did, here's how I did in my thing. I went to my, my program that I was doing and I said, I need a temporary sponsor. Mm. And that gave me an out in case I didn't like the guy. Mm -hmm. And, and that gave that person an out too. So I finally, I went through like four and finally I got the one and someone recommended my current uh, sponsor and man, I'm, I mean, so here's, here's something I said the other day. Here's what I found this out last Friday. Uh, I said, uh, I was, I, I got this resentment. There's people, there are things that I've done, Michael, where when I get to my step where I need to make amends, step nine, there's people who don't want to hear it. And I get it. And it's not an apology. It's just like, okay, I know what I did wrong. Let me know what I can do to make it right. But never hear from you. I get it. But there's parts where I, my drug of choice is everybody's approval. And I got this obsession and my brain is wired like that. And finally, some guy called the show 30 years sober last Friday morning. He said, you know what? We are not bad people trying to be good. Mm. We are broken people trying to get fixed. And that hit me. I'm not a bad guy. I've got this disease. Mm -hmm. freaking, I was freaking taken away from my mom and dad at age 10. Jeez. That's kind of, what kind of abandonment Michael has. Oh, God. So until he even. gets down, you well, know, so uh, uh, no doubt that you can, but holding your hand up is not the answer. You need to be well, happy. You know, Yes, he cut me off, but my uh, aunt and my mom died of alcoholism at 60, both of them. All right. Well, buddy, I really... So, I'm kind of in heart disease, and I have heart disease. I take six pills a day for it, so, you know, I'm kind that, of... That, was that caused the alcohol-induced cardiomyopathy? Is that... And, dude, don't... Just say, Tom, shut your mouth. I want to talk. I want to hear what you had to say, but when, when we rebuttaled, you said you want to know what to do, and I asked you, are you willing to go to... Rational recovery, celebrate recovery, uh, AA. Is there any program that you would consider going to? No, I think I want to do it on my own. Okay, well, dude, like, good. Well, well, that again, if you can figure out your brain and why you—that's what we call a dry drunk. But I love you. I want you to. Uh, again, I'm not. How how can you do it on your own and and learn how to be happy? I don't know. I could. I wish him the best. I really I wish, do, dude. I wish you the best too. And we are already, we are always here. There is no straight road to the path of sobriety. 100%. No, Here, here's what I'm saying. Like, uh, I can check in with you guys since uh, you guys do super talk all the time, and just check up and tell you how I'm doing. If I'm having a bad day, I can call you guys. I mean, that that could be my emotional support. Well, we're we're a, we're. We're we're a snack between programs. We're not a support. We I tell you what, if you're watching on Tom Abe Comedy, if you're watching on Maven America or on Sober Talk Live, on Sober Talk Live we do have a private group called Sober Talk Live Private Group, and there's people in there who work all types of different kind of programs, not just the one I'm working, the Twelve Steps. And mm -hmm. there's people in there. Who, I look. I don't care how you get sober. I want you to be successful. I want you to be happy. And I want you to talk to your doctor before going cold turkey. That's all I want. Create an alternate Facebook profile, join that group, and then just. Well, you don't even have to. Do, well, the group is private. Or, or, I mean, like, if you don't want your name out there, because it's. Yeah, right now, people you know don't. I mean? People watch. I'll go back. It sounds and watch. like he doesn't want it to be public. He wants it to be on the DL. Like, he's yeah. that type of alpha. You That's know, totally type a. cool. So just th that create a, a secret profile that, that so you, nobody knows who you are and, and just join and, like, talk to somebody. But you, I you was. Never, and you know what? what you'll find out. Michael is my twin brother. Everything really? he said, I've said. Everything he said. And it wasn't until I was 52 that I found like, okay, I want to try another way. I've tried it my way. No, I'm going to prove you guys wrong. I'm not, I I'm not saying I'm you can't strong. quit. I'm not saying you can't quit. I want you to be happy, and, and I want you to be... Dude, yeah, that's great. That's great. Maybe you get it from a book. Maybe you get it from Sober Talk. Just do me a favor. Go no, to your that's, doctor. That's the thing right here. Sober talk. I mean, well, never ever. I'm not depend. trying to come on here and be a bad. Speak to you, sir. I'm not. Yeah. I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I'm just saying. 
I get it. Have, I get it, dude. I, I get passionate it. about this. Don't let don't let me don't let me be a, an ass uh, to you. I just when it comes no. to kids and it comes to a, a case of beer a day, and it comes to it's come to deep seated emotional t- turmoil that you don't even realize you have that could come out. You know, I just want you to be happy. You're a very young guy, yeah. and uh, yeah. I want you to be ha- I want you to be health- healthy and happy. Guys, that was Michael from Avon, Indiana. Brother, hey, I love you. Call no, me if you no, need no. me. Do I now? All right, so that is uh We have gone way, way over time here. And dude, you were great. Uh, you hey, were great. What's your, great your, really do you have a do you me. have a website now or where, what what is yeah, where yeah. do people find you? www.larryl.com. And, That's uh, LarryForemanLaw.com. We call him the, the... The DUI guy. And you can find me on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, 68,000 subscribers, 22 million views. Wow. Get up, man. Yeah. Get up, Larry. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, my, uh, it's my place where I showcase all my work. You can see courtroom videos of me actually trying real cases, real clients, real judges, real prosecutors, real consequences, not guilty verdicts. Wow, that is so freaking awesome, man. And then I go live like every Will day. Will you come back and join us again? Uh, maybe. I don't know if you're nice enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Of course I will. You know me. <laughs> KYSBestTemp.com. Use promo code TOM30 upon checkout for 30% off. Love you guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me, Tom. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I, I don't think I... Dave Bloomer says great show. Ooh, that was fun. That mic is still hot on the camera, so we'll save any talk. I just want to... That's what I do here. I it's still hot on the camera, meaning it's still recording. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's still recording, but I want to go. Oh. Oh, my stupid. Is that, is that my phone? Uh, no, no, uh, the one on the camera. These are down. Oh, but gotcha. Just, but I just want to. Uh, but yeah, do great freaking show. Is I that mean, Michael guy actually said, like, shut up? Is it, yeah, yeah, at the very end there? Kazooie. Kazooie. You got a lot of those? Hold on. Oh, you got it. That was fun, man.